Willie D. Live. I always knew I had to have a work ethic. I knew, like, I wasn't the college type. Was uh, it good money? Huh? Was it good money? Yeah. See, first of all, I had minimum wage. I worked, my first job was a dietary aid at East Orange General Hospital. And that's serving the trays to the patients, oh. to the, you know, so I, I got, that was minimum wage. Um, I thought when, you had the warehouse job. No, first. that was later. Okay. So I'm born in December. So I actually graduated when I was 17. So I was out of high school with no job. So my Uncle Bobby, he worked at Grand Union Warehouse. That's a, you know, big warehouse. Uh, they so had got the, you the union, yeah, everything else. The way I got on, I lied about my age and told him I was 18 when I was really 17. And the reason I got in is because um, it was a strike at the warehouse in Jersey. So I got in, and just for me, it was the strike went on for like maybe a year or more. And I was getting eight dollars an hour. Minimum wage back then was like two cents, almost three. So that is a teenager getting eight dollars an hour. I was like, I took two buses there every day. Before the sun came up, I was on a bus at the warehouse. And by the time I got off work, it was dark. And I was taking two buses home. But I was getting eight dollars an hour. And the only reason I stopped that job is when they let me go because the strike was over and the union workers got back in. But from going to $8 an hour, I couldn't even use it as experience nowhere or none because I wasn't even supposed to have the job. You understand? And to go back to minimum wage, it was like, yo, I can't make it like this. Mm. You know, so that's when the streets got involved when it was like, and then I wasn't getting hired at all, because I had no experience of nothing, and I'm like 18, about to go on 19. They like, what you ever done? And I'm like, well, I just had summer jobs and anything else. They like, all right, well. Let's talk about these anthems, man. That's not it by nature anthems. Mm -hmm. Like, you part of one of the greatest groups ever in hip hop, one Thank of the greatest groups ever in music, and easily, easily, it's probably the top group when it comes to anthems. Hmm. Like, I mean, memorable anthems. Like, man, I mean, who's who 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 who's responsible for these anthems? Like, you know, is it, is it you? Is it Vinny? Is it KG? Is, is that I mean, actually, some type of all of us. Uh, but I was the writer. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, K was the producer, and Vin was a beatbox that got up into it. But it would we when we performed like as new style before Naughty by Nature, we always had to go and we put in our mindsets. We have to perform something, put something in, in song format that is a call and response. Because back in the days, like in the age, most of the records come on is just a scratch at the hook, and that was it. You just had to have great lyrics or anything else. But we were coming from the late '80s into the '90s. We was like, it's a new decade, and Every time we do our shows, we had it where it was a call and response type of thing. So we said, we got to put this in the music. So Vinna come and say, like, we need to make a song about this or that or boom or boom or that. I was the the, the writer, so I would come with the with the end, which all of us had was call and response. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know mm -hmm. me. You down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Or something people could sing along. Hip hop array. Or feel me flow now, holla if you hear me though. Come like it all had to be a harmony, call and response, a crowd type thing mm -hmm. in there. So that was our thing. We like what well, people see if they like the song and sing along with the song. And then they see a video to it. Oh, we gonna take over the world. Nobody doing that like that. Mm -hmm. So that was like our little mini secret. Yeah. But we all contributed definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. But you, you you did the most in the beginning. You would pretty much on those first few albums. You you were the only one rapping on those first few albums, right? I know. Ben um. Did, well, so the I first know. album mostly. <laughs> then. I'm like, yo, Vin, you got to get up. So I started writing everything he said. Yeah. So it was 
when you hear like hip hop or Ray, we're going back and forth because one mm -hmm. like our favorite group as a group was Run DMC. Mm -hmm. You know, so that dynamic of going back and forth and the greatest DJ, the greatest. you know, Run rest DMC. in peace, Jam Master Great J. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? So yeah. K was the mini Jam Master J, and me and Vin was running D. So I'm like, you got to start being more in the record so they know, like, you're a group, not just a hype man. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. When you guys were doing those records and y'all were hitting the road and, and performing and it was selling out and, you know, people just going crazy and all of this stuff, were you cognizant of what you were doing? Were you cognizant of that you were like etching your place in the history or where you were just in the Nah, nah. You you never know. You can never say, yo, this a hit. But when you in the studio, you like, yo, this a hit. Yeah. You feel me? Like we knew we had something. We got signed to Queen Latifah Flavor Unit. We knew yeah, shout out but it, you know, it was love yeah. from the family. We knew they was famous, but we got when we got a deal and it came out and we had our first hit, OPP, we was like Yo, we got something. We thought we had something, but you never know until you release something. Everybody that release a record like this, that, that thing. And it don't always go like that. So, no, we were not aware. We just knew, let's try our system. And one of the great things about all, even our founders, the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, boom. You could not come out sounding like nobody else or looking like no, dressing like an anything. Or you was called a biter. And you would be the fans of this. you like, oh, that sound, that's just boom. You know what I mean? So we and all groups from the eras and the eras before, they prided themselves on. You could, like I say, um, and I love, don't get it twisted. I'm not going to diss our younger generation or anything else. I hear a lot of old school. I'm, I'm not doing that. I love them. Because it's like, it's their era and they doing it their way. You know, a lot of parents in our era was like, what, what is that y'all doing? That's not boom, boom, boom. But it's like, back in the days, you could put on everybody's video back to back with no volume on. You knew when the new group came on. You feel me? And even when you heard them, Ghetto Boys ain't sound like nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody out. Anybody that came out, whether it's West Coast, East Coast, Dirty South, Midwest, that was the beauty of hip hop because you heard all different type of slang accents, the way they they ride off of beats, and it was like just amazing. That's what took it to now. It's fifty years later. You remember they used to be like, oh, two years, three years. This hip-hop music is not going to be here. That's just a fad. That's coming in. No, no, no. The magic of just everybody being their own artist. So it made us just be like, all right, we come with this new album. And you couldn't sound exactly like the last album. Right. You had to outdo yourself every time. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, it was, was what was really cool about it, too, was that you could put on a beat and you could tell which artist that beat belonged to. That's how different the artists were. You know, that's how different it was. Like, And a lot of that is attributed to the producers that we used. Uh, they were in-house, and they didn't work for anybody else. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Ghetto Boys producers wasn't over here producing for these guys. Ain't nobody know each other there. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. social media or boom. Well, we knew each other. But, we, but, we, but in we passing. Wasn't. Yeah. We see each other at shows and bow, but it wasn't like, for the most part, the producers was in our hometowns or within our groups. So we'll be like this, but we were so competitive. We like, did you hear that last album they made? Oh, we gotta smoke them with our shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It yeah. wasn't. It was a a, a competitive thing. Yeah. Like, because yeah. everybody's sound was from that region or where they were from, and that's what made it so funky. Yeah, who's responsible for y'all merch? Cause y'all got some of the dopest merch. Um. Well, we all like came <laughs> up. We had yeah. once we had the logo and everything else. Then was that was his part mm -hmm. in it. You know what I mean as well. 
because we never wanted anybody to be looked at as like inferior in the group or not a part. So Vin really went and he was like doing a, we looked at Public Enemy for one. Mm -hmm. Like Public Enemy had their merch and they album sleeves and all that and that logo. Like, God, this is huge. And then we seen them like torn overseas and stuff. All them white folks wearing that. Whew, we was like, hold up. Ching, 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 ching. So even when we had the brick and mortar store in Newark, the Naughty store, it was like, yeah, Vim was running the merchandise. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's dope. Mm -hmm. Dope. Man, tell me about when you met Michael Jackson. Tell me what that experience was like. I felt like a GG, a gangster groupie. <laughs> yeah. I was gangster like, yo, this MJ. Is you serious? Now, 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 under what circumstances did y'all meet? Um, to our homie, rest in peace, Heavy D. Okay. Heavy D had a, a joint with him called Jam. I remember that song. Michael Jordan was in the video. Right. So he invited us there, like, to the video, and, like, we like, what? We go to the video and see Mike. And he shake our hands like, and you know, OPP is ABC, Jackson mm -hmm. 5 Sample. Right, right. Yo, that song is my joint. I felt like I was in a straight Matrix dream, like Michael Jackson. You know, he by nature, I love you guys. And how you did y'all, how did y'all get the damn rights to release this. I would never have thought Mike or, or whoever owned the publishing nah. would give you guys permission to use that sample. Exactly. Well, what they did, um, thankful for, we were actually uh, signed to Warner Brothers Records. Shout out and to Benny Medina. Okay. Benny Medina. Yes. Uh, they didn't know what to do with hip hop. Like, I would, but you know, they love Latifah and through, through you know, Business Connects put us on Tommy Boy, but it went through and Shaquem's great managing skills. They was like, okay, let's hear, oh, these guys are, boom, uh, mm, uh, okay. What we can do is, tell me you won't get any publishing from it, the production. We was like, so? Y'all gonna clear the sample? We could tour forever off this. This song, we already made it and knew it. We was like, this song right here, nobody has a, a, a Jackson 5 sample or because you couldn't get it clear. Through the connects over there and Warners, we got that sample, and it was a rap like a doobie. Yeah, that was big. That was big. So we was like, we don't need no. So after like yeah. 30 years, which is now, it's start when you start getting some publishing, producing, but we got the writer's credit. Yeah, that was, you know, that was and we big. tore until you know, yeah. still doing it. <laughs> That's how it was when we sampled uh, Steve Miller, you know, for the Joker. Yeah, to give we, them the keep... we did the gangster love. We was like, man, they told us we couldn't use it, and we was like, man, this shit is jam because we had already made the song. We mm -hmm. was like, man, we Jay can't was like, change. I want to do. We was like. Man, we putting this side, man. They can do what they want. You know you do. ain't gonna have no publishing off the production. Man, so what? We gonna, we, yeah, man. <laughs> that was the same type I know deal. Exactly what you're talking about. That part. So you meet Mike, mm -hmm. and 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 does Mike know who you are? Yeah, I say he was like naughty by nature. OBP, yeah. I love that song. So he really knows who you are, and he's he, did he rap the song? Because I heard a lot of times when Michael rap songs, rap songs. He when knew he liked enough to say, "You down with old PP? Yeah, yeah, you know me. You down with old PP? You know he'd be like play a beat like substitutions with his hands, and I'm like, "Yo, Michael Jackson knows me. I'm the shit." D did he have bubbles with him? Yeah, he had bubbles. Bubbles were with him. Yeah, the, he what was up. Was Bubbles on his back or he was holding him? Man, uh, Bubbles was walking around dressed <laughs> better than us, yo. <laughs> With badass bras walking him. Like, is you serious? <laughs> like, are you yeah. serious? Yo, it was like a movie. What kind of, what kind of suit did Bubbles have? A what suit. Kind of, he a had a suit. suit. It probably was. He had a tuxedo or just yeah, a Yeah, probably suit? was Saatchi or G. It what, was, did he have a tie on? <laughs> yeah. Black suit, black tie, 
white shirt, and hands out, and you know it ain't no uh, shoes going to fit him. Man, whatever happened? Do you know what happened to Bubbles, man? Because all of a sudden I just stopped hearing about Bubbles. Did Bubbles die? I mean... Yeah, I guess he did. I, I mean, believe, spent, spent you know, time. monkey years and human years is different. Yeah. Like, you know, like dog years. Like, I would. <laughs> I don't know how long. He dog, might be pimping out in L.A. somewhere. I don't know like, how long monkey He's probably got alive. a gang of hoes. Like, <laughs> Bubbles was. <laughs> Bubbles, man. <laughs> so, so Mike, y'all meet Mike. Mm -hmm. Mike is jamming to the music and everything. Yeah. yeah. And did you observe anything about him? That that made you go like wow outside of him being wild by you guys. No, I was just I was basically in awe. I mean, you know, all the talks was going on and everything else, the skin lighter and all the rest of that. I don't care about none of that. I'm like, yo, he black. Period, and the talent is undeniable, and the legacy and the legend who he is, why he was alive. And I have a part of being here in the video and taking pictures and all the rest of that. So nobody could say you lying. Hmm. Not only was we in the video, we had pictures that was all over everywhere and anything else with MJ, the Prince, Heavy D, Michael Jordan, two MJs. And it's all because in this time it was like just OPP out. It wasn't even hip. It was the first album. The first album we were rubbing elbows with 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 the biggest some biggest of uh, the biggest stars on the planet. Oh, you come on! This is when I knew you guys were dope, right? I only knew one song, mm -hmm. and that was OPP. We were on tour together, and the only thing I knew was that OPP song. Mm -hmm. But when y'all hit the stage, y'all rock. Y'all yeah. rocked it. That ain't easy to do, rocking the stage when people don't know your music. Yeah. You know, when people don't really know the lyrics to certain. They everybody knew OPP, mm -hmm. and you, your 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 fan base, the people that came out to see y'all in particular, they knew the song. Mm -hmm. But other people were just like me, was just rocking who didn't necessarily know the lyrics. Because at that time, because, we 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 were getting paid. Where they wanted like we just had a single out, but they wanted forty five minute yeah, hour show. show. Yeah, so we had to perform. So that when it comes into even our gangster songs and anything else, it was like our mental was always calling response and because we was doing talent shows all over before we even came out, and we had to rock a crowd that don't know none of our music. So we made our albums like. Don't nobody know this. We got to, if we play this anywhere or perform this, the crowd has to rock with us. Whether it's a gangster song, a party song, a sexy song, or anything else. And they did. And uh, a lot of artists come out now, they blow up. They have hits, but they never performed until they perform. Again. And sometimes the shows is like you could tell. We were performing at all types of ghetto where like the Apollo uh, type audiences that'll boo you off stage if you whack like years before we even came out with OPP. So we already had stage presence and knew how to rock a crowd, period. 